Hi, hi, hi. You're welcome again to another vlog. This is October and we're not getting fancy anymore. You can see it's real that the weather is getting cold. In fact, we are waking up to like minus one, minus four in Saskatoon and it warms up to maybe like a nine, a ten. But the weather is getting cold. You can see how I'm dressed. There's no fancy anymore. We are, you know, dressing like masquerades these days. But anyway, we are in the cold season. We are approaching winter. We are still in fall, but the colorful leaves are still falling, you know, messing up the whole place. But we are grateful that the seasons are changing. There are different dynamics to how this works for everybody. So you need to keep yourself warm, wear warm clothes. Just keep yourself warm because this weather does not smile, doesn't know you. So if you feel you're yeah, and you feel you can surmount it, well, good for you. But just keep warm so you don't fall ill or anything. Um, so I'm also grateful for this month. I've talked earlier that this month of October is a special month in my household. It is like a three-edged sword. It is first my husband's birthday and I'm excited and thankful to as many that celebrated him. Um, he had his birthday and we just called a few people but a few people turned out to us hosting about 80 plus people when I was counting adults and children that entered my house. Jesus! It was like 80 plus people and everybody had food to eat. But we're excited. Thank you so much for your well wishes. Thank you for your love. Thank you for how you have shared all these memories with us. We're excited. We are thankful. And it's also our wedding anniversary this month and five years here in Canada. So it's our own Thanksgiving. We had our Thanksgiving on this particular day to celebrate all these three things and all these three blessings in one. And we're so excited and grateful that God has brought us this far in Canada, whether the enemy likes it or not, whether we go up and come down, this Canada, it is home to us and we have come here to stay. So shout out to everybody. Hallelujah, somebody. <clears throat> we are thankful that we are here. So I'll just leave a few footages of, you know, the experience that we had with the Thanksgiving in church and the celebration at home for you to view. Who noticed anything new about me in this video? Okay, what did you notice? This one. So this is my new look. It's a collaboration with a brand called Fermo, and I'm going to talk about it in a little bit. Well, that said, I don't know if you noticed something different with my glasses. I'm such a very stylish person when it comes to eyeglasses. I love different frames. They are like wearable clothes for me because they also complement my outfit, they complement my look. And because they are also stylish, I love to find stylish eyewears with colors and frames that match my style. So that's it. This is a collaboration with Framo and Famo has different kind of glasses. The range of glasses includes RX, non-RX glasses, sunglasses, driving glasses, reading glasses, all kind of glasses that you can find in the market. They've got all of this covered. So you can go and pick a particular frame that you love. The beauty of it is that even the pouch that comes with your frame can also be used as your lens cleaner. So it's like a two-in-one thing. I really like it. You can find different kinds of frame. They are pretty cheap and affordable. They are stylish. In fact, this particular one was $26.99. It is so nice. And they can also help you with your prescription lenses. So this came with prescription and it is really nice. If you notice, I'm such a cool blonde look person. You know, I like beige, I like brown. I like some other masculine colors like blue and green, but I'm such a very cool and beigey girl. So I love this look. I love the style because I really don't like something too plain. And I love the little patterns that came with the frame. It just brings a little pop out of the design. And this is really, really nice. So you can get your frames from them. Right now, if you use the link I'm going to put in the description box, you can get about 50% discount using that code. So the link will be in the description box. Use that code and be able to get 50% discount with my code. It's a beautiful collection that they have. Most importantly, it is very, very affordable. Style, affordability, covered. So head over to Farmo right now and pick one for yourself. 
50% discount and you will not regret making that purchase. Thank me later. So please tell me, is it only me or is it in my household alone that we see that things are expensive in Canada? Are you seeing it or is it just me? Things are really getting expensive and I don't know, you know, how we've come this far. Is You know, we talk about inflation, but if you buy one thing, two things, three things from the store, then the punching, the figure, you're wondering how many items did I pick? You know, gone are the days when even back at home in Nigeria, we look at these prices go up and we are alarmed. But now we are at this point. We've been saying it all, but we are still saying it. It is expensive to live life here in Canada. Cost of accommodation is high. Cost of, cost of feeding is high. Even if you are paying rent or paying mortgage, anyone that you fall into, it has become expensive. And I don't know, is really is it really worth it coming to Canada? Is it really something you look forward to? I don't know, and that's why I'm doing this video. Is Canada really worth coming to? We look at a better life, we look at a better experience. As immigrants, we say, oh, we want to fulfill our dream and come to this part of the world. You know, Canada dream, experience. We're celebrating five years, we are grateful. But is Canada really meant for everybody? Let's call it speed is speed. Is it really meant for everybody? Let's dissect this thing. And I'll start by saying, look, with the current and frequent changes in the immigration process, it is alarming that everybody has come to be confused with what the government is really talking about. Today, it is PGWD. It changes with the international students as regards their work permit. Tomorrow is deportation. You know, another time it could be visitors that can't stay anymore. It could be anything. And then all these things keep making visitors or immigrants to Canada shaky. You know, their status remains shaky. And it confuses those that are also abroad trying to move to Canada or looking at this opportunity. Should I come to Canada or should I not? And so I'm just here to sensitize our mind and make us, you know, think again, is Canada really worth coming to? And I know that sometimes for students, parents that are well to do, they send their students or their children abroad to come to the university here. Um, some of them after their high school or secondary school back in uh, Nigeria, for instance, or any other part of the world, they send them to the universities here, to the polytechnics here, to come and study. And it's a, it's a good route for them as they have you know even though they don't have experience but they can come in to the university they have good grades they have admission they can from there begin to work towards their PR and then get their final stay but leaving a 15 year old or a 16 year old alone in Canada also begs for concern because you have to know the child that you have can you confidently leave that child I've seen parents that have left children or sent children abroad at that age and the children turned out yes they might have wiggled and fumbled and then come back to their senses but there are some that have totally drifted away and made their parents regret sending them here so i'm just addressing that part of the of the divide of children younger children i won't personally my family won't send our children abroad and that's why we moved with them we wouldn't send them not that they were not well behaved, but sometimes this society, you can't even imagine what you will meet when you come here. Things keep evolving and you know, the pressure for children that are just getting formed, they don't know anything. And that's why I really am against that 18 year old adult age that Canada has set. Because they say you become an adult at 18. Excuse me, what does an 18 year old know? what do they know because if they don't they need guidance they need tutelage they need direction they need you to pull their hands to help them to do stuff and even with 21 years that we call adulthood in nigeria these students still know nothing so if you leave them alone to the whims and caprices like somebody used to say i've forgotten now of the devourer that would devour them here and push them to where the masses move to, you know, where their vices and things that they feel they are standing against 
a lot of people, then they fall because they can't hold, they can't stay on their own except they are really grounded. They have really brought them up in such a way that they are grounded to know that, no, I cannot do this. It is wrong. This is not the principle or the virtue that I have been brought up with. And then they, they, it takes a strong mind because Canada, even as an adult, hmm, you have to have strong mind though. Because it's like, if you can't beat them things, you join them, you know, that kind of adage. And so many people we see, we condemn a lot of things that happen here. So for children, for me, I would rather say, let them, you know, come to that adulthood where they can really decide for themselves and make decisions. For a child that is fresh out of high school or secondary school, coming to the university alone, except you really know your child, it is difficult. And then looking at coming to the university or even coming out of university and you need your child to you know from there or if i apply for a postgraduate program or master program of course when you come to a master's program then you are already an adult adult you know but when you are fresh from university out of your home country then i guess you are a bit more matured you can make decisions even when you probably falter in some decisions it's okay because you're an adult you can come back you can realize but with somebody that have like no experience like that in the high school or uh, you know secondary school that for me is a no-no and you know coming to canada as well because it has so many adaptations that come with it even us we are still adapting so many things fall on us so many things come on us that it still shocks us and even though we say canada is embracing canada is diverse canada is open um accepting immigrants there's still some things that shock us and we are still getting to know so for those categories of people that come in even if um you can you can immigrate in that way you know come in as a postgraduate student or even come do your master's program that's fine and then begin to navigate but you must understand that you have the capacity to be able to pay your way through school because see hmm, some students or some children are still dependent on their parents even though they are out of the university because they are not working their parents still send money do they have the capacity to pay for these fees these fees are not cheap international student fees it is like times three of a PR fees when you're a PR holder. So for me, this is just my own candid advice or candid advice. I don't know how else to say it. I would rather say that look, coming through the PR route, that is still the surest route for you to settle and move into Canada. And you know, by that you are not paying school fees. That is already one box off your head or you thinking of how do I make these fees or the year is, of school year is running to an end and you're thinking how do I pay these fees because you already have said you have capacity or you have some money back that is going to help you finance your way through school and you're halfway through school and something awkward happens or you can't even make that way. But with PR, you don't have that concern. You can even come in as a PR holder and decide to now go to school. But already you are a PR holder. So you can decide. It's not the one that you come. Most people that come in as students, they, they, they really don't want to come in as students. Is that maybe age is not on their side and then they come in and um, they just feel, let me come in as a student. They really, it's not that book that is doing them. They want to come as, you know, immigrate to Canada and be a citizen eventually. But these are just routes that make them come, as some also come in as visitors and want to come and hide. That one is a no-no now, you know. If you come in as a visitor, it's really difficult. Maybe except you find someone that you marry, <laughs> that you can help you with citizenship or stuff. But it's kind of difficult. You have to go back. So PR seems the best route. Or if you find a job out of country that brings you here, that also seems okay. But your proof of fund has to be standing well. You have that to back you up and move this way. So um, accommodation is also a thing that is really, really expensive. So you want to minimize that exposure that you would have with bills. Because if you have to come, you are paying for rent, you are paying for school, you are going to feed yourself. And then you scarcely will have time to work because you also have minimum hours to work as a student. Tell me how you want to survive this Canada. And then you begin to now 
question why you moved here or you now start discouraging people from coming here so this is not a yay or nay thing but it's also to sensitize you to know that look there's a lot that goes on into immigrating to canada in whatever category that you find yourself which like i said the best route for me will still be pr because it gives you more comfort more peace of mind it helps you to really you know be comfortable because you know that you're not spending the only thing you're spending on is your feeding your accommodation you're looking for a better job or a good job uh, from the start when you move here and you know just begin to pace your way through like you know when things come so please um, we need to look at these things. Canada is not cheap. Canada is really expensive these days. And I hear people say, because they also don't want to come here and come and start from the beginning. It's discouraging. Just weigh your options. Look at all, all, as, you know, your, your situation, how it affects you, your family size. Just look at everything in perspective and know what to do. Um, don't run away from the advice of people that have gone ahead of you because they know better You have not come to this soil if you are not here. So you don't know it, it, I remember even when we moved here and you know There was even less communication with a few people or most people self even back at home And some people feel offended that you have come here now You have you have doubled your shoulder and they begin to feel offended that you are not responding to you They don't understand you know one timing is one thing um, you try to settle into a new country. It is <laughs> it is crazy and because you are also still trying to Maneuver your way through things life generally work Settlement is a whole ball game and people don't understand and they feel offended Me, if you offend yourself you offend yourself because I don't even look at your side I am trying to settle is a new life entirely and if you feel offended by me Probably not getting in touch with you on time or not responding to you on time Sorry, Mabinu, it is not my fault. It is the new country I've come to. So you have to give time. And when you for people that eventually move here at the end of the day and now see how these things go, then they look back and say, Oh, we apologize because we have felt this way about you. And you know, now we know better. So the bottom line is people that are abroad, you should you should not even be hounding them because look, even though things can be tough back at home there's still a way you know there's still a way of survival but here all the discrimination you trying to settle i was still talking to somebody about you know the massive increase i saying i'm not undermining that massive it is massive how people are losing jobs here in canada if you know people that say to you that they've lost job then you know there's just this increase and there are no jobs commensurate to you know this amount and People lose jobs with no cause. People lose jobs, nobody is saying anything. They just tell you there's no more work. They put it as, most of the time there's really no cause. There's nothing substantial that would back up why they let you go. And these things happen daily to immigrants especially. So immigrants are going through a hard time. They might not tell you back at home, but please, you guys need to be gentle with immigrants and know that, look, these are things that are, re that are real or realities that we face here in Canada. So back to whether you want to move here. I will not say yeah or nay, but the bottom line is you need to be prepared ahead of time because there are so many inconsistencies. There are so many things that come your way that you don't even envisage. Here, there's no, I, I, in fact, I, like I'll always be a proponent of people finding or building businesses. It is good for you. Because there's the uncertainty is that you are navigating that path and then you coast along until you find that footing and you know how to go about it. But if you are not and you are at the mercy of an employer that will fire you at any point in time because you carry one leg or because you were working, they did not like the way you work or you said something and they just turn around and say they are doing restructuring. Or one funny thing to back up why they let you go without a reasonable cause. And I think these are things that the government needs to fight. There must be a reason, something that backs up. They can't just say you are no longer needed. Your services are not required. There must be, the government should support immigrants in this aspect. We came here to help the economy, to support this. See, during the COVID season, they were, all immigrants, most immigrants really were the majority that were filling the gaps during the COVID season. And now, 
all the Canadians are back or whites are back to their jobs and then they let immigrants go. Koda is not good. These people have hold that fort during COVID. And even here, yeah, few years after COVID, they are contributing their quota to the economy of Canada. So what is going on? The government needs, in fact, with this election, somebody needs to be saying that, that look, you can't just let immigrants off the hook on their jobs without a reasonable cause. Why is it that it is only immigrants? I'm not really seeing a white person, let's go. Please, somebody should answer me in the comments if you have seen one. I have not heard. I have not seen. But it's mainly and basically immigrants that are asked to leave their jobs for no cost. So these are things that you also need to be prepared about. These things are real. They are realities here in Canada. So, but if you move in as a PR holder, it just gives you three years down the line to be able to get into citizenship but it is longer when you come in at this as a student you begin that route that process and with this changing on on ending changes that comes into the political or the economic scenes or the immigration scene or oh got you and things might just be changing so um i would advise you um you can if you have the capacity look for how you can come in as a PR holder that helps you a great deal um, but you must be open-minded you know know ahead of time what to expect these things can jump on you overnight you sleep and you wake up and you don't have job again and these are the realities that immigrants face here in Canada so don't be dis discouraged don't be dismayed there are still opportunities here there are still immigrants are doing well I'm not discouraging you immigrants are doing well but if you must come just know that things can fall here or there yeah there are uncertainties everywhere in the world uncertainties are there but you must also know that look you need to be aware ahead of time I have also talked a little bit uh, I think in one of my past videos about you know coming in here as a family and the you understanding what it really takes because if you are coming in as a family it depends on the ages of your children and how you want to cope um, I know that there are a few people that will just be so confused and say why did I even come here if you have children two five seven the woman madam you it just means that you won't work it just means that you can't work for a period of time except you probably run shifts in such a way that it, it's like you're, you're working nights, your husband is working day, somebody has to be home with the children. Daycare is not affordable, it is not, there's no, there's no even, no slot, it is full and it is expensive except you get support from the government. So these things are tough. These things need to be known ahead of time. If you have older children, like we came in with our teenagers, it was easy. So it wasn't, nobody was babysitting anybody. Nobody was looking for daycare. So that is a different scenario on its own. But if you are not in that classification with your children, then you must know that, look, you are in for a very long thing. The woman should not be discouraged because these things can discourage you. But just know that, look, there's work ahead of you. Just find ways in which you can, you know, just stay in the home front. If you have small businesses you can do alongside while at home, please keep at it and begin to do it. Or find jobs that can help you work at night. You can't even find where to keep your children because one, they probably won't be in school. Or maybe just one of them, if they are like six or so, will be in school and the others are at home with you. How do you want to cope? You want to kill yourself. So you must look at all this in perspective so that you are not stressing yourself out. You know, and that's why it is important for couples to help out. You know, help yourself don't leave all the work to the woman don't leave all the work to the man it is stressful and don't send your wife alone and you stay back in your home country it is stressful it is stressful Canada is a life that is stressful and we need to manage this stress in fact Kai Canada has shown us pepper but we are grateful that we are here we are we are evolving we are making progress and I'm just so optimistic that look when you weigh your options everything that has to do with you then you can determine in your heart with god on your side whether canada is really meant for you or not so guys i'm going to wrap up here if this video has been helpful to you please put in the comment section are you in canada here say hey say nay say whatever you want to say put in the comment section let's know your experience about if you're encouraging people to come to canada or not or they should just stay in their own country and 
you know just say whatever you feel and if you're new here please like subscribe so that you continue to see the content when i post one please share this video to those that you feel will be helpful to and thank you for always staying tuned with you are always my ogs here thank you so much i will see you again in another vlog catch you guys Thank <music> you.